you very much. And um, I want to welcome our participants. So my name is um, Dr. Bright Okoyafu. I'm a, a mining and environment consultant and also a lecturer at the University of Mines and Technology. So today for the YM um, series or lecture, we'll be discussing what I called um, improving value by optimizing underground mining activity schedules with a novel MIP model. So I'll do it very quick so that we can have time to share or discuss some of the dynamics of this topic. So for the presentation, we'll look at the introduction, then we'll remind ourselves on the various underground mining activities we know. Then we'll zoom into what I refer the traditional scaling approach and the modified traditional scaling approach, the optimization approach. Then we'll look at a case study using the novel MILP, then some conclusions for our take home. So usually as mining professionals, when we are given a block model like this, we tend to make value out of the block model. We want to um, see how we can turn the block model into some value that will later come up as a mining project and if it is an underground uh, mine and you have a model like this, then you want to look at stoop optimization. Are you optimizing the stoops in the various block model? Some do use some tools, others also do not do that. Then we can move to stoop design. So we design the stoops that will give us value for the mining projects. Then some do select the mining method to use. Then the strategic rock schedule also comes in. Before later, we look at um, strategic mining activity schedule. So when we talk about the strategic schedule, then we are looking at the long-term um, schedule of the mine from the onset to the life of mine. So that's what we refer to as the strategic schedule. So usually when you have um, an ore body in this form where the ore body is inclined, you could design the stoops and also design your various developments your various capital development. So these are a RAM system and we see the various levels. So for a typical mine, we have the development schedule. So the development, um, the principal or what we say, the capital development, which are the RAMs, we have the return air raise, we have the fresh air raise to bring in air into the mine. We have some workshops or fuel bees or passes. So all these things could be designed manually. Then on a particular level, you can see that we have some stoops. You design some mineable stoops. Then you can have your, your operating development cutting across the stoops. Then you can decide to know the extraction. So in this case, I'm illustrating um, extracting from the end of the mine for towards where we came from. So we are moving from the end towards the ramp. Then every level I've got the fresh air raise and the return air raise and tracking and all. So all this design also depends on the philosophy of the mine, what the miner prefers and also management. Now, for a typical um, underground mining activity, what we concern ourselves with is the production drilling 
what is the production schedule, the drilling that we have to ensure that we achieve the production. Now look at the development drilling as well. We can also look at the blasting sequence or the blasting schedule, maybe for a week, for a month, for a year, or for the life of mine, which mostly most mines don't do. We only concern ourselves with the medium term, maybe five months or three months um, blasting schedule. Then loading and hauling, that will correspond to the rock movement to be able to uh, maximize the projects. Then rock supports also very key. Um, that's also one of the key activities in underground mining, how you support the ground, how you um, support the working environment. Ventilation is also important, how you send air into the environment or into the working faces and how you remove foul or uh, noxious um, gases or fumes. Then finally, the backfill. That's when you mine a slope and you want to backfill the slope or put rock back or anything back to hold the slope so that you continue mining. So that's also a different type of mining method. So if you want to use that kind of mining method where you must support your slope, then you must also look at backfilling. Then there are several other mining, key mining activities. Now, the strategic schedule, is it only with the loading and hauling? That is the rock movements that we have in the mines. Usually because that is driving the processing plants, most of the mining companies, we focus on the loading and hauling of the material. So when we talk of production in the mines, most people are concerned with how much tons or ore or mineral of interest have you moved to the processing plant? So in the traditional scaling approach, it's basically based on independent scaling. That is, the scaling is driven by all production. How much ore or how much mineral of interest is moved from the mine into the processing plant? So that focus actually defines the traditional scaling approach. In this case, mostly we have simple tools. Some use Excel, some use a manual system where they use their own um, Excel base to be able to move the rock that if a stop is about 5,000 tons and I'm able to blast 1,000 tons a day, then I can take five days or I can take um, five working days to be able to move that 5,000 tons from the stoop. So they use the manual system, which obviously brings in some bias because now it depends on the experience, the, the, the experience of the mine planner. And also it depends on how well the mine planner knows the terrain or the environment. So there are a lot of biasness in doing that. It's usually assumed that the method of stooping is known. That is, are we mining from top to down or from up to, um, from bottom upwards? Or do we know the stooping method? Let's say block level, uh, block caving or sub-level caving or uh, sub-level stooping or open stooping. Mostly we know the stooping method and therefore it makes it easier for the mine planner to schedule the rock movements. Now, other mining activities depend on that or production, especially when you are moving the rock, then the, the activity of rock support comes in. How then will you support the rock whilst you are moving the ore? How then will you provide ventilation whilst you are moving the ore? So the whole schedule is like all production, all production, all production. Then we have our various minor activities like the development schedule, the backflow ventilation, ground control, all being done in connection or in relation to the all production. So in the traditional approach, the all production is actually driving the schedule. 
Now, some mining companies have moved to the modified traditional scaling approach, where in this case, most of the scaling is done sequentially. Sequentially here means that the schedule is again driven by the oil production. However, some tools are available for use. Some of the mining software tools, which are not specific to underground scaling, are actually adapted for use. Now again, how much um, biasness can you accommodate? Which tool is the best or which tool is being used? And how is the scaling down? So mostly what happens is that the method of stopping is also assumed in this scenario. So it means that your method of mining is also known. What happens is that you try to schedule your oil production. Then you ensure that before the oil production, you have a development schedule as well. And there is ventilation schedule, which moves to backfall if you have to backfall the stop. Production drilling schedule, ground control schedule is also, then finally uh, blasting schedule. There could be other ones as well, but what the modified traditional does is that the mining engineer tries to link all the various activities together in a software so that the software will rearrange the best schedule or the best um, um, way of mining or carrying out an activity that will increase the value. So what happens is that if the mining um, professional or planner misses something or there is some interrelationship that is not created, then it means that the software is not able to define that. So we say uh, garbage, you put in garbage and you can also expect garbage out. So there is no control in that. What this also means is that we try to only maximize the days or the hours or the minutes or the months in scheduling a particular project. We actually do not look at the integration of the various activities. Therefore, it is a better form of the traditional approach, but we could do better if we want to maximize the value of the mine. And then we move on to the optimization approach. The optimization approach, what it does is that it simultaneously schedule all the activities together and line up the best way of achieving all the activities whilst maximizing value in the underground project. So it does not just look at the sequence of, of the activities, but it looks at the interconnections, the interrelationship between the activities simultaneously, and also um, tries to maximize the value. So the scheduling is driven by a set objective. So the mind planner could set the objective as value addition. Value addition could be like increasing the, 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 the net present value of the projects or increasing the, the mining life or the life of mine based on several factors or based on management call, we can have a set objective. So when you have that value driven by the set objective, then the schedule could be optimized. Now the optimization ensures that the biasness is reduced or even there is no biasness. One important thing too is that the stopping method could be identified by the optimization process. So the mind planner does not need to know whether we are using sub-level stopping or we are using um, open stopping or caving or any type of mining method. So what it does is that the, the optimization rather uses the set objective to define the stopping approach or the extraction approach. So at the end of the day, you are even able to identify what kind of stopping method you should use for a particular ore body. And that to me is the key here. So you don't physically look at the nature of the ore body to define your stopping method. 
you look at the economic value of the oil body through the optimization process and the stopping method is known. We could also restrict the optimization and third optimization to follow a predefined stopping method. So that can also be done. So you achieve two things. You can predefine the stopping method or you can allow the optimizer to define it for you. Now the extraction method could be a combination of the methods. So there are several extraction methods, whether you are moving down to the to down to the top or you are mining from the bottom upwards. There could also be a combination of those methods, whether you should combine them and also whether the rock formation is allowing that to be done. So this to me is one of the key areas that we can maximize the underground mining operation. Now what it happens is that there is a black box, which is the framework or the, the, the optimization model. So what the optimization model does is that it does the simultaneous optimization and it's able to simultaneously identify the all production schedule, which is key for the mine planner. It's able to define the development schedule. It's able to define the ventilation schedule at the same time. Simultaneously, we are able to know the drilling schedule. We are also able to know the ground control, that's the rock, um, the rock support systems and the schedule that you need to be able to achieve the oil production. Again, this also manages the stockpile schedule. How much should you stockpile? How much should you process? When you stockpile, do you have to go and take it in the next two years or the next three months? You'll be able to define, the optimizer will be able to provide all this schedule. Again, the backfilling schedule will also be known and also the blasting schedule will also be known. So in just one black box of optimization, all these activities are able to blend simultaneously to produce um, a coherent or concurrent um, schedules at the same time. And to me, that is a value addition to the traditional and the modified traditional approach. Here again, the biasness is reduced because it is the optimization which produces the solution. Now the optimization is, as I said, we have an objective function. So the objective function could be maximizing the MPV of the mining projects. Sometimes based on the community we are mining in, especially in a developing country, they may management we want to satisfy the community and retain the life of mine instead of just maximizing the MPV. So that could also be um, an interplay in the objective function. But in this case, um, we mostly want to maximize our profits or our MPV. And when we are doing that, we do that in the presence of the underground mining interactions. What are the mining interactions? The mining interactions in one mine could be different from the other. So you want to have a site specific mining interactions. Some of the mines may have fresh air raises, let's say 30 meters from the main entrance. Others too, due to regulations may have to define um, some of the parameters or some of the activities. So that is what we refer to as the mining interactions. Then we also have the grade blending. So the optimizer even assesses the grade of the stove before it makes the decision. Then we also look at the mine ventilation schedule that you need. The objective function again can be achieved in the presence of the rock support schedule for the particular mine because some rocks may be very hard and may not need some excessive rock support. Others too may be very low and will need excessive support. And all these things affect the overall schedule of a mining project. Then the primary development in terms of shafts or in terms of 
uh, internal shafts or a ramp or an internal ramp, all those are primary development because they stay to the life of mind. Then we also have the secondary development, which are mostly like the operational development that we have in the system where you can have the all drive, the cross cuts, and all those things. So when that is done, um, there are a set of equations that are defined. So the underground mining operations, there are a lot of equations. I'm just um, showcasing some of the equations here. So they are all mathematically based and we know that mathematical models are what we say exact, they are correct, unless your equations are wrong. Then also we have the underground stock power management system. The primary asset development, how they also interplay in the mine. Then the secondary asset development in terms of the all drive, the cross cuts, all those things. Then you also have the relationship between the ventilation developments that you have. And you want to ensure that the solution that you receive, they are not negative. That means that they are feasible. So for a typical mine, um, so this MILP model, the mixed integer linear programming model is implemented on a typical mine. So for this particular mine, for a particular plan view, we may have the block model in the form of rows, let's say row A, row B, row C, and row D. So when you enter the mine through, let's say, a primary access or primary development like a shaft, then the row A is actually at the end of the mine and the row B is actually at the entry of the mine. So that's what we see. So we see the A is at the end of the mine fold. So for a typical underground extraction schedule, where we want to mine from the end of the mine for towards where we come from or towards the entry, then the arrows are showing the direction of mining. So we are mining from the back and we are mining also from the sides and bringing them closer to the entry where we came from. So in that case, you have the row A comes first, row B second, then the row C, then also the row D in this order. So this is a typical plan view and it will be like a typical level with the various um, operating developments moving through the capital development, which is the middle line that we see. So this is a typical setup of a mine and that can be implemented in the mixed integer linear programming model. So when we have a typical mine like this, where the open, where the top section is mined with an open pit, and you also have the underground, then how then do you provide a schedule for the underground mine? So that's the focus of this presentation, to look at how we schedule the underground mine when we know the blocks. So you don't even, you have not even done stop design or you can even do stop design and you can still determine how well or how the underground schedule should interplay or should be able to maximize the profits for you. So in all cases of a typical mine, we use all the most of the economic mining and processing data. So for this, it was implemented for a good deposit. So we have the processing cost, the selling cost, the selling price, discount rates, processing recovery, then the maximum oil extraction that the mine can achieve, the underground mine can achieve, including waste operational development cost, the primary asset development cost. So a typical software will take in all these inputs. So the model also takes in all these inputs and even adds additional inputs that are not available in the typical mining software. So when you do that, then simultaneously, you are able to produce um, the oil extraction strategy. So this small mine was being mined in eight years. 
And the first two years, there's no oil extraction, obviously because there was um, there was capital development that were being done to make sure that the oil comes in. And we see the average grade of process oil. So it's very high and it reduces or it falls with the years. What means is that the, the model actually targets the high grades to process them early to get much returns before the lower grades. So that's how the model has been functioned. And that's what a grade blending constraint does. It tries to maximize the fact that you mine high grade stoops first before you mine the low grade stoops uh, last, or you defer the low grade stoops to the latter. So the capital development, so we see that for the capital development, it starts in year one and ends in year three before the operation development uh, ramps up and also moves us um, throughout the life of the mine whilst you are still doing the stopping. So all these are produced simultaneously. So for a typical underground level, right? So in this, for this case, the extraction sequence in terms of the vertical extraction sequence was not defined. It was not defined. So the all body itself defined the extraction sequence. And you can see that during the production in the third year, the level seven and level eight are being mined in the third year and in the fourth year in that order. So when you look at the all body, you look at the nature of the all body you are dealing with, then you'll be able to come out and say that, okay, based on the optimization, the way the optimization has selected the mining sequence, it is expedient for us to go by, let's say, um, underhand. We are mining from below stops to upper stops. So which method will fit? Do we need a backfall or are the rocks very strong? So when you do this at the preamble stage, you are able to even identify the mining method that you could discuss with your team and with everybody, all stakeholders, and you'll be able to identify that of true. It is good to adopt this mining approach or based on other factors. Let's say there is a fault somewhere, we'll not be able to adopt this method or we could adopt it, but in the fifth year, instead of going to, let's say the level six, we will defer the level six into, um, into year seven. So that we'll finish mining level nine because of the fault that we found. Now, even when you take that decision, then you have to go back to the model to then recalibrate it based on the information that you have. Some implementers or mining planners could be smart to include all those constraints from the beginning. That's if they know, so that you'll be able to define some of these things. So you see that the level five is mine last, meaning that the top level is rather mine last and therefore um, the mining extraction schedule could be deduced from this optimization method. Again, when you look at the ventilation um, shafts and the uh, main shafts, right? Whilst you were doing the main shaft, we're also doing the ventilation shafts. That's what we refer to as the fresh air rays and all those stuff. So you can have one of them as based on the regulations in every country. Some countries require two egresses, others to require only one, others three. So based on that, you can model that. So this case, we use only two, the shaft and also the ventilation shaft. So the two were all running concurrently and again completed before the operational development support and the stoop support also comes in. So whilst you are stooping, you are also seeing the schedule for the stoop supports and also the schedule for the operational support. So at least you have a fair idea of when 
if you have a ramping up of your production or a ramping down of your production. And when you see year three, you can see that year three is even the, the year that you have most of your peaks. So the mining engineer could even recommend contract mining. Why don't we have contract mining for one year in the year three? Because we'll have a lot of machines coming in to be able to help us to ramp up to that level. And when it goes down in the following years, then we can just um, um, abrogate the contracts or change the contract to owner mining in the fourth year, then we continue with the mine. So all these are able to, you are able to know all the decision from the beginning when you actually consider simultaneous simulation or simultaneous uh, optimization instead of the traditional approach of mining or scaling your mine. So in conclusion, we could see that there's much value in employing the optimization approach. And in this case, the mixed integer linear programming framework. So what it does is that it ensures that all the underground activities are optimized and they are scattered simultaneously and not sequentially. Then it minimizes or do not introduce biasness because everything is about the optimization engine that you are using and also the mathematics that you've coded. So it's not a manual interface where you want to ensure that the production schedule comes first, followed by ventilation, and somebody with experience will say that when I was in this mine, this was how we were doing it and we had value. So he won't use his experience. This devoids those kind of biasness in the system. So you are only able to incorporate all the input from the beginning. And if any idea comes out, you can remodel the entire um, process again. Then also it's a great tool to use, especially if the stopping method is unknown. You have a complex all body and the stopping method is unknown. The optimization approach or this model MILP becomes a great tool. And also if the extraction method is also known, then uh, you'll be able to also use the same tool to optimize your production schedule. I um, want to thank everybody for joining. Thank uh, WIME for the platform to share knowledge. Thank the University of Mines for the platform and also for uh, providing us all the strength to be able to undertake uh, this research for sharing and also for my partnering uh, company, Bidumine. I know the president is online. Um, so thank you all, I'm on LinkedIn.